Hi, everybody. Welcome to The Patty Brennan Show. Whether you have $20 or $20 million, this show is for those of you who want to protect, grow, and use your assets to live your very best lives. Guys, I am so excited about today's guest. Today's guest is a very dear friend of mine. His name is Tim Seifer. Tim and I have known each other for 25 years. Uh, we live in the same community. Uh, our kids grew up together. We go to the same church. The kids went to school together. And it's been so much fun to watch Tim's trajectory, his career. I mean, he started when I first knew you, Tim. Mm -hmm. uh, I, he started at a company called Planko grew that company to like 10 times what it was when he went there. Then he went to uh, Prudential. Right. Uh, you tripled that. Right. And then now you're at Lincoln, right? right? And doing the same thing all over again. And what I think you're going to find is what Tim's gift is, leadership. It's, it's his ability to connect with people and cultivate future leaders. And when I think about Tim Seifert, I think about a quote that I just love. It's actually on my mirror. It kind of keeps me humble, okay? And I wish I could tell you who, who said this. But the quote says that the one thing that all great athletes, famous actors, and successful business leaders have in common is that they all started their journeys when they were none of those things. And I think that's really profound. I know it is for me because, boy, did I start when I was nothing of the sort. I think it's especially poignant because I know, Tim, how you started. So first, welcome to the show. Patty, thank you so much. You know, when we have you, – you look forward at your calendar, and, mm -hmm. I, and I know you do this. Yeah. And there are certain events that you go, that – is going to be a lot of fun, yep. and that's going to be high energy, and I cannot wait to be with my friend, Patty Brennan. Yeah. And congratulations on your success. It's been, it's been wonderful. We, we share that common bond and that journey together, mm. and it's really, it's really fun to be, be with you today. It is sure. so much fun, and I, I didn't plan on saying this, but I will never forget, Tim, taking my daughters down to one of the Barron's Women's Conferences. Right. Because I wanted them to kind of get a feel for, you know, what successful women do. I thought it would be a great example for them, right? Little did I realize that you would be the keynote speaker at that conference. And I'm telling you, you stole the show. And it's just amazing to, you know, witness this right here in our own community, you know, with our own kids, et cetera. So, again, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to be talking today right. for mm -hmm. all of everybody watching and everybody listening about culture like how do you do the thing that you do right we you right. and i had had a, a wonderful opportunity to share the stage actually sure did, yeah. when we talked about this right. um and i thought it would be kind of cool to bring you back since you're right here right and let people get to know you uh, on a personal level and before i start um why don't you tell us a little bit about how you grew up I grew up in Norristown, Pennsylvania. Mm. And, uh, you know, you and I talk about mentors in life. And so I grew up in a, uh, a single mom household. Mm. I got two great brothers. Um, my mom is my mentor, is my rock. Every morning at 7 a.m. is we have a discussion to this day. She's 80, 80 plus years old, 83. Uh, we have a little phone call. We always end in prayer, uh, wow. which is just really, it's a special way, right? When you can, when you can start a day with mom, and you always end with gratitude because you and I share that, that attitude of gratitude. Mm -hmm. uh, it is going to be a special day, no matter what's going on in the world. And there's all kinds of challenges happening in the world. But you're finding that grace in that challenge and you're finding that attitude. It's just really something special. So I grew up in Norristown, Pennsylvania, uh, paper boy, athlete, mm. flip burgers, uh, went into Continental Bank uh, where I was in the management trainee program. And then I discovered, like you mentioned earlier, this company called Planco. Uh, three of my greatest mentors above and beyond mom is Joe Thompson, Ed Gold, and Jack Craig, who took a shot on this young guy, uh, went out to be a, a what they call the wholesaler, right? And it's uh, it's really interesting. It's been it's been an incredible journey. Uh, not always not always great. Mm -hmm. uh, like we said, is like, life's uphill. It gets mm -hmm. hard. Mm -hmm. But it's been, uh, as you look back, just a, a, a wonderful experience across the board. And, and you know, mom, 
Patty, I know, I, it, you know, we talk about the kids and, and having your, your girls there at the Barons yeah. meeting. And they're like, Mr. Seifert's on stage. I mean, you know, like, well, what's that? It was wild. <laughs> I just saw him at, at church, you know. Right, right. Um, which, is, which is really b- bizarre, like, in that big, big mm-hmm. world that we live in. But um, what, what was really, really special is mom also shares the passion for people like you did. Mom, uh, for 40 years, was a registered nurse. Huh. And mm-hmm. I know you, 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 you started your career out that mm-hmm. way. And... It's really special because I'm looking at your sign around wisdom and care. And here she was with her, her three boys. And Patty, every morning wow. when she had to head to that, you know, she had two jobs uh, when my dad left. And, and she supported this family, two jobs. But every morning she made sure her boys had a hot breakfast. And I'll never forget this. Talk about care. is She's a critical care nurse. And she would repeat to us over and over again because she was so delighted to come to work, to go to work. And we would often often ask why, like, what is it? And she said, you know, my patients are looking for a miracle. Mm -hmm. My patients are waking up and they're just looking for a blessing. And if I can, for just that one moment, be that blessing to them, to be their miracle, then I have a fulfilled life and or day. And just think about that, right? Yeah. I mean, to grow up with something like that, mm. pretty special, right? Really special. It is, it is such a privilege to be that person at the bedside that that patient is looking to, to you know, help them through their day and right. to give it to them real and to give them a sense of hope, whatever that might be, a hope right. that they're going to get through the day, the hope that you're going to do everything you can to keep them comfortable. It's an honor and a privilege. I used to say, I get to do this. That's right. I get to do this. And I feel that way today also in this profession. I get to do this for people, to be that person that they know they can count on and trust when the world is, world is falling apart and, you know, you know, Russia is invading Ukraine and markets are going nuts and inflation's going rampant. And yet people know I've got their back, that I'll look out for them. And it's just such a privilege, you know. We were talking about this before, and we were talking about gratitude. Right. And, you know, it, I was telling you the story that when I go to the store, whether it be the food store or whatever, you know, especially, you know, on weekends or on a holiday, I, I always make it a point to look the person behind the register in the eyes and say, thank you so much for being here. And they kind of look at me like, oh, and then I followed up with, you know, chances are you probably don't want to be here on a Saturday night. Right, right. But you are. And and because you're here, people like me who have crazy lives get to come and do their food shopping on a Saturday night instead of going out, right? This is my fun. And, and I'm just really grateful that you're here to help me. And they look at me like, wow, nobody's ever said that to me. And I remember when my kids were little— And they're like, Mom, why do you always say that? Typically, it's not that long, but why do you always do that? And I say, you know what? It's because it's true. We have to to recognize the efforts. We have to recognize that, you know, people have their lives, whether it be, you know, behind a cash register or serving in our military or working for a financial services company so that you could bring great retirement solutions to people like me so I could offer them to my clients. Like, that's a big deal because people worry about their money. No doubt. And you are doing that. For, for, for people. And what's interesting, I think, even for me, even more so, is that, you know, to a certain extent, we have it, we have it really good because we get a lot of that psychic reward, right? right? Our clients, I mean, Tim, you know, you've, you probably saw the pegboard of letters and cards. Thank you so much for everything you do. We don't know what we would have done without you. And I think about your role and the role of the people that work at Lincoln. They don't necessarily get those rewards, per right, se. Right. Um, so I, I'm going to be really interested today to learn more about how you kind of generate that goodwill that and give people that sense of purpose. That's right. That they, they really do have. Because without people like you... 
what are we going to do for our clients? That's right. But let's get back to the gratitude thing, because I think it's so important, you know, that we are setting an example for our children, our families, our colleagues, et cetera. And you told me a very interesting story about how you show gratitude. You were like, yeah, Teresa at Wawa. I'm like, <laughs> you've got to be kidding. I know Teresa. Tell us about Teresa. Well, I mean, this is a master class. What you just started, this is like a master class mm. in the servant leader, right? Mm. Yeah. Often the greatest leader in the room is one who serves. Mm. And that's what you, whether it be nursing or what you do for your clients. And even at the grocery store, mm. when you say, I see you, I understand what you're doing. I appreciate you. And then Patty, you matter in my mm -hmm. life. Teresa, I mean, Wawa, you know, yeah. that's our local, yep, local yep, yep. you know, I don't know mm -hmm. how many of your listeners know the Wawa. Exactly. But, you know, right. It's like the a 7-Eleven <laughs> or a Sheets or whatever. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's the go-to place in our area. Right, right. And so if, if you want to receive, you want to receive, you want to receive, we, we give. Mm -hmm. We give, we give, we give. And so here Teresa is. And De Teresa greets every customer with a good morning, have a great day, during this time day, be safe. Mm. People will wait at Wawa in a line where the other service rep on the other side is like, I'm open over here. You know what I do? Mm. I wait for Teresa. Mm. Why? Because Teresa makes my day. She makes my day. And I, in return, give to her. Right. And she's, she knows me by name. Yeah. Right. What they say, one of the greatest things, you know, Patty, mm -hmm. people, do you know their name? Exactly. Right. Yep. And so I, th that that whole idea of being the servant leader and building great culture, mm -hmm. we build great culture because we serve. Right. And we care. Yep. Right? Yep. It's so important because, you know, I tell everybody, you know, that every once in a while I'll be introduced by one of my, you know, the people that work here and they say, this is my boss. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Let's get this straight. I am not your boss. You're the boss of me. I work for you. Right. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I work for these people. I work for my clients. This is what it's all about. I, you know, it's a different realm. I get to do this. I get right. to, right. you know, really talk with each individual who is serving our clients and find out more about their lives and find out what, what keeps them up at night. That's right. People go through tough times. They and sure sometimes, do. you know, they're very private. You know, and they want to keep it to themselves. They don't want the drama. And at the same point, I just feel like it makes a difference when someone like Tim says, hey, you know what? I was thinking about you today. How are things going? What's, what's, what's on your plate? What's happening in your life these mm -hmm. days? Mm -hmm. And how can I help you? Whether it be professionally, personally, how can I help you? And what I've learned is that that approach like, people always say to me, Tim, gosh, your people are the best people. I, I literally had a conversation last week with, you know, a client who's been with me for many years, almost 30 years. And she was referring our firm to someone else. And she said, you know what I said, Patty? She said, everybody I talk with is as good or better than the next one. Like, these people are so caring. They're so smart. They go out of their way. And then she said something which was kind of it. She said, how do you do that? Right. How do you, how do you cultivate that? And then how do you keep these people? And, you know, to be honest with you, I don't even know. I know. <laughs> you know? I know on your behalf. How? So as we think about building that outstanding culture, right? So this is what you and I talked on the main stage at, mm -hmm. at the, right. the Forbes yeah. top producers. And congratulations on Thank your success. You. But it's, it's really these three things that we talk. Number one is how do I unite this team that you love and trust mm. around a common vision or goal? And so this is what the most outstanding leaders. You say, what, what are the characteristics of great leadership? And you are – the model. It is vision. They cast vision. Mm. And where there is no vision, they perish. 
In other words, write down your vision. I was just walking around the office, Patty. Mm -hmm. Your boards, yeah. your appreciation boards, your goals, we unite them around this common vision. And so write down your vision and make it clear so that those who read it will run to it. And although it may take some time, it will come to those who believe, right? right? Mm -hmm. So you and I know that it's a famous quote forever in a day. So vision, purpose, think about key finance, think about mm -hmm. purpose. Yeah. And then lastly is that mission. So vision is everybody around your beautiful office. They know because it's in front of them on the boards, they know where we're going. Mm -hmm. They know what our goals are. Our vision is this. So where are we going? One. Next is, you mentioned, we have a purpose. Our purpose here at Key Financial is to serve. But it's a purpose that's deeper than that. So our purpose at Lincoln, for instance, is to help everyday Americans retire with dignity. But everybody, a purpose, right? Perfect. To, to, find, to, to have everyday Americans, we provide them with financial peace of mind, right? It's that peace. Mm -hmm. and, and we all know in today's world, peace. I mean, anxiety yep. is through the roof. Yep. Fear. I mean, we, 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 you and I talk about yeah. that, right? So it's this noble purpose. And we can double click on that and drive mm -hmm. way down deep. But you all have a purpose. And everybody knows that we're here to serve our client. And we're going to serve them where they need to be served. And it may have nothing to do with financial. Right. You've told us stories on the main stage mm -hmm. about helping, helping your clients through a really, really difficult time in life. Did it have anything to do with mm -mm. their financial and their balance sheet? Right. So that would be two. So it's vision. It's what is our noble. It's noble of noble purpose. Mm -hmm. Right. And then lastly is mission. So this is where we're going. This is why we're going there. How specifically are we going to get there, right? And that's your pillars, your standards of success here at Key Financial. So when you talk about building culture, mm. the reason I'm so excited about it is I teach on it all the time. But, Patty, you, you – it, 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 this is a case study mm. in excellence around culture. So, you know, that's kind Thank of question you. number one is – is, does everybody understand the goals, the mission, the vision, mm -hmm. right? It's really important. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for me, the goals are not so much for key financial. The goals are really for the clients. And you mm -hmm. mentioned it. It's that financial peace of mind. Mm -hmm. I feel like if we just help enough people get that, the rest will take care of itself, right? That's exactly right. And and I, f I find that that people really can pick up on that. They just know. I mean, I'm just going to say, I could care less about the money. That's right. I could care less. About, people ask me all the time, Tim, what's your minimum? And they are, they, they are like, you don't, have, you don't have a minimum? No. The question is, can we make a difference in your lives? That's right. Can we justify our presence in your life? That, to me, is the most important thing. That's our purpose. That's why we exist. We exist because clients need help. And, and sometimes the help they're getting is not always the best help. Um, and I don't mean to say that in a negative way. I just – sometimes they just don't know where to go. That's right. Right? That's all. Um, so it is a – it is – as I always say, it is a privilege. It's an opportunity. And for me – at least for me, I feel like my purpose now is to cultivate the young leaders of the future, of the people here. And that's something you do so incredibly mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So you start out with those three questions, right? And then tell me how you do that a little bit more. Well, then then it's really so, – so, so question uh, under this idea of, of – uh, I know mm -hmm. we all – you and I share leaders or readers. Yep. So this is the culture code. Right. So question number one is, am I clearly laying out that vision? Question number two is, how do I foster this feeling of community? That is really important. I agree 100 percent, guys. This is really important. Right. We're all in this together. Right. So we, we're creating an environment where people can do their best work. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. And I know that you and I share a lot of this passion around being that authentic, empathetic leader. 
Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, every one of our employees, just like our clients, is what they're what they're saying is really three things. Number number one, we kind of, we kind of hit a little bit around. Do you see me? Do you understand mm -hmm. me? But but number one is, do you really get me? Do you do you understand me? And the only way we do that, Patty, just like you do, is we sit down with everybody around the shop, and we ask those questions. Mm -hmm. You know, what are the two or three things that are most important to you? And like you and I shared before, is they automatically go into work. Things that's most important. No, 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 no. I want to know about family. We call this fork. Yeah. Family, things that are most important to people. What, what are they really, really passionate about? It's family, forks. It's F-O-R-C, not the K. Hmm. Family. Yep. I mean, what's more important than family? We share all the, all the yeah, children, right? And, absolutely. You know, the, so family, my occupation. Right, so you think about how important this place is to you and everybody in this recreation. How important is recreation? And then, lastly, is community and giving back. And so, there's this idea around: Are we making this environment a place to do your best work? Right, to do your best work, which is point number two to culture. Mm -hmm. And that's your, that's your. We're going to work hard. We're going to work hard on behalf of our clients. But you know, what? we're going to have fun. Right. Anybody, as I walk around here, you got the ping pong table, you've you've got the you know the the, yeah. the cornhole, yeah, you, the kitchen, the, the whole kitchen. Bit. You've yeah. got to have fun. Mm -hmm. You've yep. got to have fun and make that safe environment. And that's because you're an authentic leader, mm. right? You care. You care. You know what, Tim? One of the things that I learned well, fairly early on, it probably wasn't early enough. But I, I, I learned the importance of understanding what each person's superpower is. That's right. I believe every, every person has a gift. And it's my job to figure out with them what that might be. Um, I often tell the story about Brad, who is our chief investment officer. And I was having one of these meetings with each employee and uh, just kind of finding out a little bit. We were going through, we weren't really going through a restructuring, but I just wanted to make sure that, you know, everybody was on the right seat on the bus, right? That's right. So I was having the conversation and Brad is super smart. I mean, he is incredibly smart. You know, went to John Hopkins, almost perfect SATs, probably perfect SATs, you know, applied mathematics and economics, dual major, the whole bit. So I was having this deep and real with Brad. And I was saying, you know, tell me a little bit about your day and the things that you really like to do during your day. He's like, what do you mean? I said, well, for example, you're really good with clients. You're great on the phone. You just nip it in the bud. They love you. You're great with the portfolios. He was doing financial plans. He was doing a lot of analytical work. I said, but, you know, and I was trying to figure out the client piece. And I said, do you, you know, how do you like that? Do you, you know, you're really good at it. He, he said, uh, not particularly. I'm like, really? You don't like necessarily having the conversations with clients. By the way, if you're a client listening to this, don't worry. You can still ask for Brad. <laughs> He'll give it to you straight because I still say, sorry, you know, every one of us has work that we, you know, need to do. But, but at the time, he was doing a lot of it. So long story short, I said, really? I said, so what do you really like to do? He said, investments. Give me the portfolio. Passion. Give me the asset allocation, the strategic. I really like that. And at the time, he was doing comprehensive financial plans, A to Z. So I said, huh, that's really interesting. So then I went to Eric. And I said, Eric, and I went through the same conversation. He said, I love looking at the tax returns, doing deep dives on their cash flow, their budgets, even though I don't like the word budget, you know, looking at strategically thinking about where they are today and where they're going to be in five years and 10 years and trying to anticipate and optimize on all different levels. I love reading trusts, et cetera. I'm like, really? I said, how about the portfolio stuff? He said, ah. I could take it or leave it. I'm like, hmm. So, as of long and short, we did a little bit of restructuring. Eric is our chief planning officer. Brad is our chief investment officer. And I truly believe that they are really working on the things that they not only love, but they're great at, right? That's right. I had a woman who worked for me 
love this person. This was the days when, Tim, you, you knew me when. Uh, I had graduated from the laundry room on Greystone Drive, right, right? Right, We were down in the basement, and I had a wonderful woman named Helen working for me. And Helen was just, oh, she was just what I needed, Tim. I had four kids. I was running like crazy. I was, you know, had this idea of what this business could look like. And it wasn't like any business that was out there. So right. I was like really trying something that nobody else was doing at the time. And as I was making my way up the stairs, because I would see clients on a on a business center, on a townhouse type uh, small office there with my bags on my shoulders. And every time I'd go up there, those stairs, Helen would say, say to me, go be brilliant. Love it. And... And for me, what I learned from that is she believed in me long before I believed in myself. Mm -hmm. She believed in me. And she was so wise and intelligent. And I was doing something one day, and I was, like, detail-oriented, you know, filling out paperwork or something. And she's like, don't. You know, actually, I said to her, I said, you know, I'm really not good at this stuff. You know, I work late at night till, you know, one o'clock in the morning, filling this stuff out, et cetera. You know, I, I, I need to be better at this. It's a weakness of mine. And Helen shot back at me. She said, you know, Patty, she said, here's what I think. You know what happens when you, you work on your weaknesses? You get a lot of strong weaknesses. Focus on your strengths and delegate your weaknesses. Give me that paperwork. You should be doing that stuff. That's and it was great. very interesting because I've applied that to find out what is each individual's strength. That's right. And we focus on their strengths because one person's weakness is another person's incredible strength, right? I mean, we've got people, for example, who are so detail-oriented and have such a keen eye to spot things that may be a little bit out of whack, and it's a gift. I'm not that way. People come into me all the time and say, Patty, like, I'll, I'll, I'll take a look at a, a plan or a portfolio, and I'll say, you know what? Something's not looking right here. Here's what I think, A, B, C, and D. And they're like, how in the world do you see that? How yeah. did you? Because it's something really small. It's a tax situation or whatever. And it's just I've got big picture. Of course, you know, you do something for 30 years. After a while, you get good at spotting these things. But I think the point is, is that everybody has a gift. And to take the time to cultivate each individual's gift, whether they realize they have it or not. So that's so, so let's let, uh, double click down on that. So in Greenwald's famous essay in the 70s, like I said, this is going to be a master class mm. in servant leadership because that's mm. what you and I are passionate about is leadership. So in his famous essay, The Servant as a Leader, which was the essence of servant leadership, the number one trait of the most fantastic servant leader is what you just demonstrated. And you, what you said is you sat down with each and every employee, wonderful people, and you found their, their, their superpower. In other words, for our listening audience, you took the time to ask great questions, and then the number one thing that, that, that Greenwald has said about servant leadership, the greatest leaders of all times, they're fantastic listeners. They ask Great questions. And then what did Patty Brennan do? You took the time to believe in them, but to listen. And so it's one of those things, Patty, that we don't teach enough of. Mm. Like, you know, I know in, in some of the things they're doing in military, in the leadership of military, we go to school and you can, there's courses on sales, there's courses on strategy, there's courses on tactics, there's course. Who's teaching leadership? Uh, who's teaching listening? Listening as the leader. And so just for the listening audience is just take the time like you do to listen. So can I just share three points Please, to that? Yes. So here's what we find. This is what all the research mm -hmm. says is number one is walk, watch your talk, listen ratio. Hmm. You'll find right. that the best, right? And when you sit down with your clients, just like your employees, you ask questions and your staff's really great at listening. Patty Brennan is really great at listening because you say, tell me more. Right. So watch that talk, listen ratio. Right. So is it 60, 40? Is it 50, 50? 
when I sit down with you, it certainly isn't 90, 10, Patty's 90 and the client's 10. It's the opposite, right? So watch the talk listen ratio. Number two thing that you're excellent at is you're so curious, right? Now there's leadership's good, is you don't interrupt. So our parents taught us that years ago. Don't interrupt. Let them finish. Why? Because Patty and team are making notes. So you can't interrupt when you are so curious and tell me more. And you're writing notes, writing notes. And then how do you build trust? It's you build confirmation bias. So Mr. and Mrs. Brennan, you know, Patty and Ed. So if I understand you correctly, you said A, B, C, and D. Is that right? And you say, yeah, did we get it all here? You got it all. That was perfect. What happens? You repeat it back. You're confirming. You're listening. It builds trust. Mm. And so I, the reason you're able to, to build and find superpowers in your folks, in your employees, is you do what all servant leaders do. Point number one, we listen. Mm. We listen. And it's just, it's fantastic. It really is. It is fantastic. And, you know, it is not necessarily, you know, everybody's got to make a good living. Everybody's got to have good, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But it is understanding the human being, understanding that human side Mm -hmm. and that they are more than just what they do for you. That's right. Um, I often, I I will often say, especially when uh, people are going through difficult times, you know, you are so much more important to me than what you do for me. You're so much more important. Mm-hmm. So what's going on? How can I help? We'll figure it out. We've got enough people. We'll figure out we have your back. That's and right. how many times that we have had to say that to people who work with us. And it's just really, it's such a, a privilege. It's so important. Mm-hmm. And and to your point, I don't think that it's done enough. No. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we were, I was talking at, um, one of these, you know, economic development, um, I do a, a, an annual outlook. And I was talking about this great resignation that, you know, 60 Minutes did a show on it, et cetera. And I said, you know, it doesn't have to be the great resignation. You know, mm-hmm. it all ultimately comes down to why are people leaving? It's because they don't feel important. That's right. People work for for people. They don't work they, they don't want to work for companies. People mm-hmm. do business with people. They don't want to do business with companies, right? So who are you as an individual? And I think that has a lot to do with this great resignation. There's no doubt. Um, and you know, we for me at least as that person who can make a difference in their lives is to understand that this has been a really tough time mm-hmm. for a lot of these families. So, you know, for example, we built a desking system so that our parents could bring in their kids, whether they're elementary school kids or middle school kids, because it was getting to the point where the parents are like, oh, man, this is getting really old, this homeschooling and having the kids on computers, and I'd like to be around my friends at work. And it was really interesting how much we all missed each other. So I built this desking system with the big plastic glass, and moms and dads brought their kids in. They could stand over the kids' shoulders, but they could still get their stuff done, et cetera. And we were all doing this together, watching the kids, helping the kids. It was just a great opportunity to recognize that some people had more challenges in that area than others. We had a couple of babies that were born, right? And and so, you know, to just find a way to make it work. You know, I've just never... um, I don't know, for better or for worse, I'm not really a corporate person. And right. so it's it's interesting because I, I, I've hired a couple of people in my career. And I basically say, you know, and these people didn't have any experience in the financial services industry. And I just believe that there's something that for everybody, right? right? And so these people are like, well, you know, I haven't been in the workforce for, you know, 15 years. I don't know the technology. I don't know. Don't worry about it. I can teach. We can teach anybody anything. But there's something that you can't teach. That's right. And that's what, you, that's, that's what we have here. And it's just so interesting to, to you know, kind of see where these, what these people are going through in different seasons of life and for them to know. This is, this is, we're going to make it work. We're going to make it work. And people who, like, again, we just hired somebody brand new, no experience whatsoever. And they're like, 
you're, you know, are, is this so, I mean, they were, it was so funny. They were like, is this okay? Like, I really don't have any experience. And I'm like, it's okay. We're going to put you, we're going to put you here. We're going to teach you this. And by the way, if you don't like it, no big deal. We've got another area that you might like better. And if you don't like that, we've got another area. And if that doesn't work, we'll just kind of figure it out. And you may not even like it here. So just let's keep, you know, lines of communication open and we'll make Mm -hmm. it work for, for everybody. And this person's like, wow. Because, you know, to me, then that person's going to be really happy, very productive, and they're going to be, you know, they're going to be loyal. Not to me, because I don't really care. I mean, I do. I, that's important. But they're going to be loyal to our clients. That's right. They're going to go the extra mile. To your point, you know, it's just incredible some of the things that these people have done for our clients. That's right. They have nothing to do with their money. Because you believe in them. Yep. 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 Exactly. I, I believe in you. Right? I believe in you. Exactly. Right? And you can give that life experience you know, I mean, you're a mom. Yeah. You were a nurse. Mm-hmm. You're, they're, 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 you know, think of, think about the working women today. And all of a sudden you're in an office, you get sent home, and you've got so much to juggle. And what you're able to do is bring this culture of saying we believe in you so that you can turn around and believe in our clients and give them what they need, right? Again, leaders ask great questions. They're outstanding listeners and they believe in their people above anything else. And it's special. And it's not everywhere. Believe, mm. believe me, right? It's mm-hmm. not, You've been around, it's not everywhere. for sure. It's not everywhere. Mm. Yeah, that's great. Tim Seifert, thank you so much. Your insights and the way that you just A, B, C, one, two, three, you've got it down. And really, you've got it down to a science. Right. I think that that's, the, if there's one thing, folks, that Tim Seifert is known for, it is his ability to lead others and to nurture others, to be everything that they were meant to be. I'm so grateful for your friendship. I'm so grateful that you are here today. I look forward to doing another podcast with Let's you. Let's do it. Let's do it, Tim. <laughs> Let's do it. And and really, thank you for all of the work that you do at Lincoln to make our lives better, which ultimately make our clients' lives better. So thank you for everything. And thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. It's The energy in this room, yes. it's contagious, it is right? Awesome. It's contagious. Yeah, so right. thank thanks you. so much for having me. You betcha. And thanks to you for joining us today. You know, leadership, culture, these are kind of, you know, intangible subjects, but they're so important in, in your everyday life, whether it doesn't matter what you do. You could be a mom. You are a leader of your family, right? Or you could have a religious leadership type of uh, situation, or you could be Teresa at Wawa leading her followers who go to Wawa every morning for their coffee and just really need that little piece of inspiration and have a really good day. Very, very genuine and sincere. And she makes a difference in the day of the lives of everybody that has waited in line for 15 minutes to see her. So thank you so much. If you have any questions, please feel free to go to our website at keyfinancialinc.com. Let us know what you think about this subject as well as any other subject that you'd like to learn about because we're here for you. We do this for you. Hopefully it's making a difference in your lives because I assure you, you're making a difference in ours. Thanks so much. Take care.